something like this inductor and capacitor. This is a filter. If I try to measure the AC output using my the oh, fuck the power line stray capacitors don't blow up like that. Let me just run it on low voltage AC. Let's connect two AC lines together. Here I have my car inverter running on the 12 volt battery and here I have the CD power line. Both of them are exactly at 120 volt AC. <laughs> and that's why you don't try that at home. Right now I have rectified the two sources with a diode and capacitor and we can easily connect them together. Yes, we need to make sure they are the same voltage level and the same polarity, of course. Now to make it a DC, all we need to do is to connect the capacitor across the <laughs> Always pick a properly rated capacitor for your voltages. Now we could also use a full bridge rectifier instead. Now we can use a three phase even fuller bridge rectifier or EFBR. Then they rectify these six phases using the mother of all fullest bridge rectifier or MAFBR. See if it picked up any charge. Ouch! I forgot to unground myself. That was painful. Okay, ready? Ow! It hurts where it goes in and where it goes out to the ground. Of course, this is much worse because its capacitance is around five times larger than a regular discharge a human body experience. The huge ESR contributor of this Leyden jar is the awful conductivity of salt water. If I open. Forgot to discharge the damn thing. And from the size of the arc, jump out from over ow, four inches away. Ow. I can say that the voltage of the dome can be over 200 ow, thousand volts. And that's just the voltage when it. I guess it's a capacitor and can hold charge for a while. A piece of paper from a string and bring it close. We need more string. Something starts to smell around here. <laughs> it seems like it's wirelessly being charged, although it's not wireless. Our wire here is air because the charges from the dome are directly flying through the air to the spiky wires and charging the capacitor. <laughs> Ow! <sighs> Seems like the capacitor wasn't the only thing being charged. In some of the outlets, especially in the kitchen, they bring two phases to the outlet. And to do so, if you look here carefully, they have to cut that tiny bridge. <laughs> to learn to open the breaker to we'll connect the ground also tighten these screws all the way down so they are not hanging out for no reason shocking people like Trump on Twitter <laughs> probably fine but let's just probe the signal to be sure and remember that the white wire is neutral and that's where you would be connecting your probe ground the white wire was neutral I connected it backwards just screw the outlet back onto the wall nice and straight. Now where did I put the faceplate? <laughs> Son of a... I have to buy a new one. Just remember, if you do this and you make a mistake and the house burns down and insurance figures out that you did it and you are not certified, you'll probably go homeless. So the question is, are you gonna let the fear of insurance control your life? A real man never worries about mistakes until it's too late. I like to plug my inverter into the outlet of my house so I can power more things. And for that, I made this harness that you can plug to both sides. First, you plug it to the inverter. Anytime you connect a power harness, connect it to your load side first so you wouldn't short your power supply or shock yourself. This is probably the most stupid harness one can make because it exposes high voltage on both sides. So don't make it. Let's very carefully plug it in. Ouch! Yes, we have to make sure our load is not powered from a different source like the f***ing city power. Now we can safely plug them in. Ouch! 
apparently it was breaker number two. Always make sure you open the correct breaker by connecting a light or something into the plug. But here's a redneck way of knowing which one is the correct breaker. Just short the plug in question and the correct breaker opens. <laughs> Don't do it. Let's try it. Now the voltage reading here is actually showing that there is 1.8 amp running through it. It's burning now. So here's the shunt. Now let's do a comparison between readings of the supplies ammeter and our shunt. Who set everything at maximum? I guess I did. What can I say? I like extreme shit and see if it gets warm. No, see the mouth and the lip area is more sensitive to heat. It's slowly getting warm, but it's not too bad, so it should be fine. Some high AC currents. I have a piece of 22 gauge wire here, which I'll measure the voltage across. If I connect it to the output of my auto transformer, I should and burn my fingers again. Measuring the current with my clamp meter. Let's see. Oh. I'm starting to think coming up with the idea of a light bulb didn't require much genius. Try right, touching it one more time for science. Let's use the rod. Let's see if it can turn on a lighter. Need a Faraday cage. Far so good. Time to check the low power circuit. Okay, let's power it up. According to them, I should. It's definitely beneficial to check the direction of your components before powering it up.